them and FedEx just came and dropped off a package from my friend Jim Chandler in Houston. Whenever Jim Chandler sends us anything, it's freaking awesome. And um, I'm really excited because that's this package right here. And didn't get to open the last one with you last time, but I'm gonna open, open it this time with you, all right? So you know what I'm gonna do? I am going to um, hand the camera over to Jake. That's Jake. And he's going to film my excitement for you. All right, turn the camera around. Boom. All right. Okay, so then how do we do this? Well, first, we move my lunch hot sauce out of the way. All right. And, um, excellent. Okay, so I'm going to borrow your knife, Jake. Okay. Um, Okay, last time Jim sent me a Stanley 55 plane. Oh man, what is it going to be this time? I have no idea. Um, I've kind of been out of touch with Jim lately. Um, been super um, busy with work. Yeah, he didn't forget about me. He sent me these wonderful, wonderful tools, I think. Here's one. Let's see what this is. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. This is um, the cutter for my, for my Stanley 55 plane, where um, he sent me the, the 55, but this box wasn't in there. And oh yeah, this is yeah, this is um, this is all like the beating bits, the co bits and stuff like that. So can't wait to to use these things. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh man, I just like to thank you. Okay, there's that. That's so beautiful. Put that. Right here. You know, Jim, I used the Stanley 55 just today. I did. I had to make a special molding for the guys out in the field. And, um, yeah, I used, I used it. Okay, what's, okay, what's, what's all this? Um, okay, hold on. The leather. I'm about to sit down, I think. Hold on. Okay, these are, oh, these are, oh, these are plain blades. Are, they, are, these, are these blanks? I'm not sure what that is. It's got to be a, a plain iron of some sort. Let's see, let's see if we can get the name in that. Molson Brothers Castile Warranted. I, I, I want to I, I wanna say that that's a plain iron, but man. I'm just not sure what that is. Let's see. Maybe this has got to be a plain iron as well. Um, cast steel. Jim, you're going to help me out on this. Oh, look, this, look at this. Okay. Here's, okay, this, this has been, this is a blade that's been sharpened. Something HTS French and Company cast steel. Okay, I'm not sure. Gosh, I hate to be so ignorant, but I think that's I think that's what these are. Oh, oh, this. Okay, look. No, this is the hammered end of the plane blade. Okay. Oh, I, okay. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Okay, so that, so it goes this. Ah, these are plane blades. Okay, cool, man. Oh yes, yes. I think I, I think I think that these are plain plain irons. All right. 
Tell me if I'm wrong, Jim, okay? Tell me if I'm wrong. These are just awesome. Oh yeah. Cool. This is like a handmade leather carrier, which is so awesome. You know? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna leave this here, okay? So nice. All right, what else do we have? Styrofoam, it doesn't count. It has a port too. Oh yeah, check this guy out. Oh, and it's like really sharp too. You can see it's been well used. What kind of plane is this? This is, is this a this is a beading plane. This is like what you would use to make like beaded cove molding or something. Let's see. Was this Griffiths? Norwich. You guys didn't understand the shadow there. This is so awesome. All right, I have so much to learn. I don't, I'm not sure what that plane is used for. Okay. This chair out of the way here. Aha, uh -huh. okay, look. Oh, so this is a, uh, this is a, like a cove plane. Because I'm sure this has, you know, so much of this knowledge has been lost. I'm just wondering, you know, what this, this is from England. That's from England? Yeah, Norwich. Norwich? Mm hmm. I, right, what did I say? Norwich? Yeah. <laughs> Spoken like a true American. <laughs> All right. This was, okay, this was Howland and Company, New York. A. Howland and Company. This is a number 180. 180C. This is amazing. I can't, I can't even wait to, to use it. Okay, here's another one. Oh, this is a... Oh, my goodness. This one is going to go into use almost immediately. You know what this is? This is a skewed rabbit plane. I've been needing, I've, I've been wanting a, 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 rap, a skewed plane, but a skewed plane that's also a rabbit plane that you can also use. That's amazing. See, skewed means the blade is not at 90 degrees to the, the sole of the plane. It's, it's a, at an angle. And that, that's meant for cutting end grain um, more appropriately, a little bit easier. So, yeah, that's the blade there. Cause we have to work, we have to sharpen it. So, oh, it's so sharp. Thank you, Jim. Oh, I put it backwards. Let's see. There, it goes there. Right there. <clears throat> Holy moly, roly poly. Look at this. This. This is a beautiful block plane. I can put this one to use right away as well. This one's really nice. There's no markings on it though. A lot of times I have a stamp on them and stuff. Let's see, someone put the blade in. Oh, no it does, look. Steel. Let's see, 1945, 1792. I'm not sure what that says there. W. Matheson's? Sheffield, England. Sheffield is where all the steel in England is made. Really? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's like the center of where all steel started being made in the world. Really? Mm -hmm. In Sheffield? Yeah, best steel on the planet. Sheffield. Really? Yeah. Like, yeah. You're not just saying that because you're from England? I'm not just saying that, honestly. <laughs> it's like, it is, honestly, Sheffield steel. Oh, look, okay, look at this. What is that? Hold on, let me, um, hold on. What does that say? Yeah, Sheffield, Sorby. Sorby, I wonder what the 1948, 
It says circa 1791. That's a C, but it says 1948. I wonder what the, I wonder what it is. And there's a 1945 there. Nine, number seven, 1792. Maybe somebody can tell me what that means. You know, I'm not sure exactly what that means. I'll have to look. I'll have to look it up and see. I just love this. I love it. I love it. Holy moly! Holy holy! Oh baby! Look at oh, this wow. one. Man, it's such a good plane. What is okay, Manchester, Gleave? Is it? Mm -hmm. That's a, yeah, it's an area of Manchester. WB. I wonder what the WB must be the owner's initials. Okay, look, this one was used a lot. See these, these hammer marks? These hammer marks are what would be used, that's, that's how you advance the blade and retract it by tapping on the butt of the plane, right? And then you tap on the front to release it. But you can see how, you can see the score lines where they were laying out the plane to be made. Oh, it's amazing. But that's like, this is like a base cap type of molding. You can see the, you know, you can see the, the profile there. I mean, I've got, I've had, I've had router bits to have, make something similar, but you know, nothing that really, nothing, nothing that nice. Wow. So excited. Oh man, this is so freaking amazing. <clears throat> oh, okay. Here's a this is not a code. This is what what do you call this? A round over? Uh, a beating bit? This is a huge beating bit here. Okay, John Mosley and Son. Let's see. Broad SL Bloomsbury in London. It's amazing. See how, oh, W Everett, three quarters. So that's a three quarter inch bullnose. See all the hammer marks? This has been well loved and well used. I love it. Oh my goodness. Ah, another beating plane. Another one. Check it out. This is so perfect for our museum. I mean, let's see, let's see what do we got here? Um, this one's got a, a cursive stamp. What is that? What does that say? Fields, Nottingham. I can't see that. Can you read that, Jake? Uh, I think it's actually easy to read through the camera. What does that say? Uh, Nottingham, yeah. But the first one is... H... Don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> My ignorance is shining forth, but this is a beating plane. I do know that. Okay. Goodness. This is another. This is like a roundover plane. This is kind of what I was using the, the 55 for this morning, is something a little bit bigger than this. Let's see if I can get this. Okay. Um, four something 180D. See that? Oh, can't see. Um, New York. A. Howland and Company. New York. So awesome. Right there. Look. Another small beating one. You can see the profile on this one. Here, see that? That's really nice. R. Tillo. This is from Owasco Tool Company, New York. Wow, I wonder what kind of wood that is. 
are to the number 105 quarter inch. It's a quarter inch beading. Ah, see, I've been using a router bit for this, you know, to make this exact same. This is the this is the profile I use on my casement windows. Ah, that would be cool, right? I can use it. This is the profile I've been using on the, on the casements. I can use this with a with the casements meet. I can use this. I can use this now. That would be authentic. Talk about handmade. Love it. All right, put that there. Put that room. Still got more box to go. Oh my goodness. Hmm. I don't know what this is. But look at the profile. Is that like a is that like a sash plane? I don't know. Maybe the what the markings on there say. CDB Freer. L Cox. Huh. I wonder. Well, this is such a cool plane though. Maybe it is, maybe it is a no, it's a, I don't know what it, I don't know what it's supposed to make. Unless it is, hmm, I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that. Hmm. A crown holding, maybe? No. Oh, this, is, this is so sharp as well. Ha. Huh. All right, well, I won't mess with it too much right now. Water out of the way. Ah. This one must have had a different, another, another blade in there at one time. Oh, this is like, oh, this is a sash plane. See that? Hopefully that blade is in there. DM. So you can see this is, this is the glazing rabbit side and this is the, the Ovalo side. This is an Ovalo sash plane. DM is a as an initials on it. Um, this one was made in Boston, Gardner and Murdoch. Greenslitch? Greens? Oh, Green Street, Boston. Green Street, Boston. Oh, this is so freaking cool. All right, hopefully there are other blades in there. Oh, I don't see it. Huh. Either way, this is one thing we'll do. Oh. This is amazing. Looking for that, hoping that blade appears. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I don't think it's one of these, no. I don't think so. A quarter inch beading plane, put it there. No, yeah, these aren't them either. This is this is the real deal. This is like this is what people used to use to make window sashes. This is this is the profile, you know. You put the glass on this side, and this is the part that goes into the inside of the house. And if you think about it, look, you know, people used to make things like windows. They would cut the tree down. They would mill the pieces of lumber. They would you know saw them into boards. They would rip them down and then they would plane them by hand into shapes with these types of tools here and hand make windows. And you know that when people took, it took that amount of effort to make something, you know that they, did, they learned to not waste any movement. They learned to, to utilize every piece of the tree that they could, right? And, um, and, to not, you know, to not waste anything, 
because you know if you were going to make something and this here's, here's the point is is that through efficiency and labor and investment and time and sweat they learned how to make things to last a really 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 long time and it's you know I mean they actually hand made the tools to hand make the, the utilitarian item you know like a window sash in the back in the 20th um, you know in the, in the, by the second industrial revolution they had learned how to mechanize tools like this but the same mentality that went into making a window product or door product by hand was still encapsulated in the type of windows that we have in our museum and that's the and that's one of the most important elements about our museum and one of the things that we're really working on trying to capture and communicate is all of the humanity that's encapsulated in these things you know because when somebody used tools like this to build a a window like that they were making it to last a lifetime and they didn't i mean it's not as though somebody said out okay today yesterday i made a window that's going to last 10 years tomorrow i'm going to build one to last a lifetime no there was never any of that you know it was you know making things to last as a lifetime was just culture you know they didn't think anything of it and that's what's so important about you know the turn of the century building because all of that's encapsulated in there and so that's what we would like to communicate about you know this work that we're doing we're trying to recapture that sentiment that spirit that that attitude towards craftsmanship you know where you know where we're caring about the product that we're putting out and um, and we want it to stand the test of time and last the test of time that's why we study our work and the results of it and that's why we have the museum here that's why we invite people in that's why we have workshops so that we can try to educate the community to uh, you know to what we have here you know I mean these planes you know that Jim sent you know you know they don't just emerge out of the uh, you know you know out of nothing you know what happens is you know somebody figures out a way to make you know a very very simple plane and they master that well then the next plane they make is just a little bit better and then a little bit better and a little bit better and pretty soon you've got you have you've got people who have mastered the art of making something like this by hand you know and you know it was they were real artisans you know they're my heroes and you know so with you know with windows like what we work on you know it's it's my dream and it's my hope that somehow through our work we can hope to achieve personally on a personal level you know the you know the the mentality the oh i don't know I mean, just the whole spirit of what was going on back then, you know, because it's just so rich. And they didn't think anything of it. That was just who they were. But now, you really notice that it's gone. You know, because anytime you hire a contractor to go and work at your house, I mean, all the work is so disjointed. You know, we're constantly having to overcome, you know, the, you know, the the bad feelings that the previous contractor went over there, you know, and 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 left there. You know, we're really trying to summon that that artisan spirit and all the work that we do and you know it's not easy you know because we're people you know and you know we get fighting against a lot you know you know our culture you know is a culture of planned obsolescence you know where people are used to buying things that fail and you have to replace every 20 years you know um things are things used to be different and that's kind of the life that you know i long for is you know person to person when we're doing things for each other and we have a you know, we, you know, invest in each other, invest in the, the work that we're doing, put our heart and soul into it, you know, our sweat. Somebody's sweat and DNA is encapsulated in this. And as I hold it, their spirit is transferring to me and empowering me and teaching me, you know, and I appreciate it. Jim, I appreciate 
you thinking of me and sending these tools to me in the, in the museum. We will both use them and we'll teach about them and we will, um, um, and, and display them and, and let them do what they were designed to do. Okay, they won't just be for display, we'll actually use them. So, um, appreciate so much, Jim, sending this stuff to us. And, uh, um, just want to say, guys, thank you for watching. Um, hope that some of my excitement over this isn't too silly and that, you know, that, uh, maybe you're inspired by it too. And maybe you can catch some of this that this is, is inspiring us and, um, try to put out some, you know, some content that, you know, really reflects what's really going on here. And so, uh, appreciate you watching and supporting us and hope that you will like and subscribe and leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. And, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, thanks. I'm just very thankful. So uh, appreciate you guys a whole lot. Love you. Over and out.